Okay, um, hello, my name is Matthew and I'm very happy to be here with uh, two of my favorite booktube colleagues. I'm here with uh, Amy from the Dusty Bookshelf and Alan from the Book Traveler. And uh, we've all read some short stories by Somerset Mom and we'll just be talking about them. Uh, Amy, would you like to say hello? Hi, I'm Amy from the Dusty Bookshelf. Um, and uh, Alan. Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, okay, so would you like me to just read read off all the short stories and then um, go from there? Okay. <clears throat> so uh, we read The Book Bag, The Three Fat Women of Antibes, The Verger, The Ant and the Grasshopper, Rain, The Colonel's Lady, and Mr. Knowall. Um, Alan, you picked them all, and uh, Somerset Mom, uh, as you've said, is either your favorite writer or one of your very favorite writers. Um, so, um, would you like to say why you picked them? Yes, uh, W. Somerset Mom is my favorite writer, and I think that these uh, particular stories uh, show uh, or display Mom's delightfully cynical and ironic style and his mastery of the form. Uh, he, throughout his lifetime, he wrote over 90 short stories. In this um, selection here, three of, of uh, no, two is what I would consider to be long short stories, two medium short stories, and three short short stories. But they all, in my opinion, uh, show um, Mom's unique style, which um, is, um, is uh, to me anyway, a very enjoyable one. And I never get tired of rereading these, what I consider to be masterful uh, uh, st uh, stories. Uh, yeah, I, I, thought, I thought they were all uh, terrific. Um, Amy, what, what did you think? Uh, did you have some favorites or? Uh... Did you I really like the Colonel's Lady. That one was quite good. And uh, Mr. Know It All was good as well. Although when I was reading Rain, I realized I had read that one before. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I thought um, the Colonel's Lady, like it, it, it kind of like kept building. Um, it's, it's a, do you want to describe what the story is? Yeah, so basically it's this guy, I forget what his name is. I'm not good with the names and stories. I read them all at once, but- George uh, Pickering, his name was. George, yes. George, George has been married to his wife, Evie, for many years, and they go about their own lives. He's not that interested in what she's doing. And one day, he sees a, a book of poetry on the table, published under his wife's maiden name. And he realizes that she's written a book, and he doesn't think much of it until she becomes like the most famous author on the town. And people aren't interested in him anymore. They're interested in his wife, but he's just embarrassed about the whole thing. And he told her that he had read the whole thing, but he didn't really get it. And then several months in, he realizes it's sort of based on her own experiences, having an affair that she had no idea he had. And at the end of the day, he's wondering whether he should get a divorce. And his friend sort of advises him and says, you know, don't, don't, don't do anything about it. Just like pretend you knew all along. And it's this funny line at the end where he's more concerned with the idea of people thinking he knew and it reflecting badly on him than the idea that his wife had an affair. And uh, there's that line about, he doesn't understand what anyone would see in her. <laughs> I found that quite funny. Yeah, I think that shows that really he underestimated the uh, uh, depth of her emotions and also um, the fact that he saw nothing remarkable in her. Though obviously the, the young man with whom she had a, a quite a long affair, uh, was able to see the qualities in her, which George failed to see. Um, so Alan, uh, since, since uh, you've read all of these and you just recently reread them, um, of the selection, was there one that really impressed you this time more than before? Or did you, were you partial to one or have a, a favorite, anything like that? Uh, there were two that I particularly 
like. Um, one is the verger. Um, this is the story of a of a of a verger who's been um, a verger, been the verger of a church for sixteen years, and um, the uh, the new um, vicar discovers that he can neither read nor write, but he has been carrying out his duties faithfully and um, successfully for all those years without being able to read or but the vicar being a self-righteous prig he, he can't stand this idea and he thinks that it's dangerous for him not to be able to read or write and so um he says well you've either got to learn to read or write or we'll have to let you go so he says well i'm too old at this stage of my life to, to learn to read and write. i've tried before and it didn't work and so he decides to go he's, anyway, he's walking down the street one day and he once have a cigarette so he walks up and down this long road and can't find a tobacconist shop so he thought i'm sure there must be a lot of people like me who want to have a cigarette and we need a shop nearby so he um eventually he finds a shop to let and he opens a news agent and and uh, a tobacconist shop um very successfully and then he eventually opens up a chain of 10 shops and uh, he's paying in some money in, into his account one day and the bank manager uh, uh, calls him in and he said did you realize how much money you've got in your account he said well, i've got a rough idea he said you've got thirty thousand pounds now thirty thousand pounds in today's money doesn't sound like a lot of money but i looked it up and it's worth in today's money 2.3 million pounds so this guy was a multi-millionaire in his time. I think probably um, in the time this was written, I think 1899, you could buy a house for a hundred pounds. So you can imagine, you know, he had 30,000 pounds. So he was a very wealthy man. I just absolutely adore the punchline of this particular story because the, 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 the bank man said, after he, after he finds out that he can't read or write, he said, just imagine what you would have been if you could have read or write. <laughs> He said, I know exactly what I would have been. I would have been the verger of St. Peter's, blah, blah, blah. So I think that is a delicious, a delicious story. I really loved it. I, I love the, uh, the second conversation with the, the bank manager sitting down with this guy. Uh, I didn't realize it was that much money. Yeah, it's a lot Just of money. Yeah. Sitting there and going like, you know, we can do some investments. There's all these different things we can do. And... He's like, well, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of worried because I don't know where all the money will go. And the bank manager is like, well, you'll just read the contract. And he goes, yeah. well, yeah. And he's like real open about it at this point. He's like, yeah, but I can't read and write. <laughs> what? Like th th this guy, you know, this literate bank manager can sit there and read and write and he'll spend the rest of his life just like, puttering around in the bank. Meanwhile, here's this illiterate guy that kind of fell backwards into a, a huge success. I just loved it. Yeah. And I guess in the ant and the grasshopper, that's another person who fell backwards into well. <laughs> yeah, that's like a great little story as well. Um, you have to feel um, sorry for the, for the, um, the, 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 the brother who spent all his life being a, a, a faithful husband and father, etc., and um, and his his brother is a worthless, uh, uh, good for nothing who just um, indulges himself. And then I, I, I must admit, I can't help liking the ending of this story where he marries a rich woman who very conveniently dies and leaves him as a wealthy man. I feel so sorry for her. what's his name. Um, I think yeah, he was also called George. Um, who'd uh, you know done everything right in his life, and um, his his ne'er do well brother lands on his feet at the end. Uh, hey, uh, Amy, um, you you've read um, uh, what was it of Human Bondage? Have you, have you read any other of his novels? Yeah, I've read a lot of them. Um, of Human Bondage, Then and Now, The Razor's Edge. Um, I think I've read most of them. 
what did you um did you see a difference in like style or tone between uh his novel writings and his short stories not really too much like obviously the novels are more drawn out and you don't get those sort of snappy punchlines like you do in the short stories and I think uh, like you, you still get the depth in them because I feel like with everything he writes, he's trying to say something about society or about people. But of course in the novels, it's more like a drawn out, uh, sometimes a more depressing thing going on. But uh, do, you, some what, of the would, short um, do you have a favorite novel? Like what, what, what would be one that you would recommend? Of Human Bondage. Okay, all right. That's an interesting one too because you start reading it and it starts to read a bit like a Victorian novel. And then as you read on, it feels more like a modern novel. Because he starts yeah. off like with the character's childhood, like you see, oh yeah, he went to stay with his uncle, he went to school, and then we follow him into adulthood and his relationships and deciding what to do with his life. And uh, that one's largely autobiographical too. It's a little off topic, but um, we, we both read Proust. And um, one of the things that I love is how um, like modern invention, new, new things kind of creep into the story, like uh, telephones pop up, uh, the, the carriages are replaced by cars. Um, I, don't, I don't know, that just sort of popped into my mind, but um, it, there's maybe some similarity, it just in uh, time passing. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Alan, what, do you have a, a favorite, like your top, top, this is your favorite writer? So what's the ultimate? Well, I thought it was funny that, um, that Amy should have chosen um, a human, uh, 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 I can't say that word, Bondage, because that is not my favourite novel. I've, I've read it uh, um, twice. It's quite a long um, novel, but um, it's highly regarded as Mon's um, most accomplished work, but it's not my favourite. In fact, I'm, I've read about 12 or 13 of his um, novels. I'm, I'm not sure that I actually have a favourite. I just like all of them. I don't think I've read... I don't think I've read anything by him that I, ha that I haven't liked. I think he's got a consistent uh, um, tone and style through all of his writings, including his plays, his, um, his essays, his, his novels, his short uh, uh, stories. He's got, he's got a particular style and attitude and approach that he, that he takes in all of his writing. And I, I just like that he's all, that the whole um, milieu that, that, that he, that he creates uh, in, in, in his writing. Have, have you seen the uh, Bill Murray movie? Of, of what? The, Razor, the Razor's Edge. Is that a recent um, production? Uh, no, I think Bill, Bill Murray made it in the 80s, like around the time of uh, Ghostbusters. Um, I don't recall um, seeing okay. it. I've seen some others, um, some other versions but um, I don't recall that one particularly. Okay. Yeah, I, I might have done. I might have seen it but I, I can't remember it. I think I saw some version of the Razor's Edge from the 1940s or something. Yeah probably I did the same. And that's yeah. actually what led me to pick up his books in the first place. Oh really? I saw that I saw part of the TV movie was intrigued bought a paperback copy of the Razor's Edge put it on my bookshelf and didn't touch it for four years. <laughs> There are several um, of Mom's um, films um, on, on YouTube that you can watch, just in case you weren't aware of that. They, they're, they're in, I think there's um, a trio and a quartet mm. that is available for you to watch, including The Verger. I recommend the, watching The Verger. It's oh, slightly, yeah. it's slightly uh, changed in the, in the film, but um, not by much. Is it is it, is it a, like a short a short movie like a short film? Yeah, it's a short movie. Uh, I, I, I can't recall, maybe an hour or something like that, or half an hour. I, I, I can't remember, but um, it's it's in a trio of of, of uh, stories. So I can't think it's that long. Okay. So it sticks basically to the the, the idea of 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 the verger, but um, 
that they just changed, just tweaked slightly for the film. It's, um, it's, it's excellent. Amy, are there any other uh, stories that you like? I liked Mr. Know It All. <laughs> yeah, I did as well. Mr. Know It All, right? That is that, that, that ending where he says he's an expert in pearls and he's looking at the, the necklace around this woman's neck and says, oh, that's definitely real pearls, I know. And the husband says, no, it's not. She got it at a department store in New York shortly before we sailed. And his wife had been alone in the States for a year and he had gone to meet up with her. And then of course she turns like deathly pale as this this Mr. Know-it-all insists that it's definitely real pearls. And so he takes a closer look, sees the look on her face and admits that he's wrong, even though he's right. <laughs> and I guess the implication is that she's had some sort of affair in the States and been gifted this really expensive necklace. <laughs> Yeah, I, I really like the, I like the dynamic of not only is a, is he a know-it-all, but uh, he like inserts himself uh, unwanted, like he, he's just like uh, bothering everyone, um, and it's like these close, cramped quarters, and they're just sort of he's like a barnacle, just kind of stuck in there, um, and so that that sort of character trait I think uh, did a great job. Like the irony pays off when he kind of takes a moment and says, "I I was mistaken. No, I'm I'm wrong." Um, and I I also like the little detail of the uh, the envelope under the door. He pulls pulls out the hundred dollar bill again to put it back in his pocket. I thought it was great. Yeah, I think um, we we start off not liking uh, Max. Uh, a killer because he's obnoxious, but um, but then at the end, a bit, a bit like um, Sidney Carton in A Tale of Two uh, Cities, he performs a noble act, and so we uh, we like him a little bit more than we did in the beginning. But uh, yeah, I thought that was uh, that was excellent as well. And I really like the three women of Antipes as well. That one was quite funny. <laughs> yeah, what I can't understand with that is how come for 25 years they didn't eat a, a square meal and yet they got fatter and fatter? <laughs> they, were, they weren't being truthful about something. <laughs> <laughs> but I love it at the end when they absolutely stuffed their faces with all these lovely things that they hadn't been eating all the years. <laughs> That's like so relatable, every diet ever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, what did you make of the uh, book? I liked the idea of the physical book bag, but the story itself didn't do much for me. Well, the book bag, I think, is just um, like, um, it, it was a device that, mm -hmm. that mom used to introduce the theme of his story. So if you remember, what came out of the book bag? What was the, the book that the, the, the man chose? I don't recall the title, like the title meant nothing to me. <laughs> the title was the absolute crux of the story. The title was The Life of Byron. And a bit later on, they discussed Byron and his incestuous relationship with his half sister Augusta Lee. That was the theme of the story. That, yeah, I that, that, gave, that. that gave you the clue as yeah. to what the story was about later on. Obviously there was an incestuous relationship going on between the brother and the sister on, on this island. And uh, but what I can understand is I never got pregnant. <laughs> I think these things. Um but um and also, the other thing I can't understand is why did he get married? If he's already, if, he, if, he, if, he, if he was having this long-term relationship with his, his sister, I can't, can't understand why he went away and got married. That confused me. But I but just apart, apart from, sorry, I just, I just assumed that he met this woman and was actually smitten with her, and thought, well, I'm going to have this marriage, like in spite of what I'm doing with my sister. And so I, I'm assuming he actually loved this woman that he married. Well, yes, she was young and attractive, and I'm, I'm assuming he must have fallen out of love uh, with his 
his uh, assistant decided that it was you know it wasn't something he wanted to carry on but she was absolutely devastated obviously because she killed herself so that's a spoiler i hope you don't mind too bad <laughs> Yeah. Um, Amy, Amy, was that was that your least favorite story? It was my least favorite story. Yeah. Uh, what about Rain? Well, have you spoken about Rain? Rain was pretty good. That's the one that I realized I had read before. Yeah, that's, I think that they, is probably his most know. famous one. His most famous short story is Rain. What I like about Rain is the way that Mom used um, the his descriptions. Um, of the rain as a symbol of the um, the sort of implacable self righteous attitude of the Reverend uh, Davidson, and of the way he well basically persecuted this poor Sadie uh, Thompson, and uh, but eventually uh, of course she she got her revenge effectively. <laughs> Was it revenge, though? No, no well, it, it wasn't murder, but uh, but 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 she, she certainly had the satisfaction of uh, of uh, of him having killing of, of him killing himself in spite of the persecution that he uh, that he imposed on her. So, yeah, I think um, also the other, the other thing that I got from that is is that is that um, Morm used Doctor MacPhail. As a kind of a, of, of, a, of, of a, a, a foil to the Reverend uh, Davidson, and I think Morm is reflecting his own attitudes, and probably the readers as well to a certain ex um, extent in the kind of comments that Dr. McPhail um, makes um, throughout the um, story. But I think it, uh, it it is a bit of a um, in a bit of a morally dubious mm -hmm. story, obviously. But then Mom liked to go on the edge as far as that was concerned. But the thing I liked about Mom's writing is he's never explicit. He's never crude or rude or lewd. He, he, he writes in such a way that you have to um, use your imagination and experience of life, I think, to be able to appreciate uh, the, the some of the uh, themes that he tackles. Yeah, I think uh, as far as a writer goes, I, I I love how he's sort of like he's like he can be savage or brutal, but it's always very measured. Um, like it reminds me of like um, when when you hear about like that English humor where there's all all of the um, like biting commentary is in the subtext um, and I think he does that really well it just seems like uh, carefully considered and polite uh, but can really pack a punch behind it uh, instead of like how you say uh, being uh, like gratuitously crude or something mm. Also, the other thing I like about Mom is that he is very um, tolerant of human weakness. Mm -hmm. He's not judgmental. He writes about um, human um, foibles and weaknesses and uh, moral failures, but he writes about it in a very humane and tolerant way. My my, uh, my, my favorite story was The Verger, and uh, I, I liked the idea of this basically intelligent, capable, uh, creative, hardworking guy uh, that just happened to, to not be able to read and write. He was able to have a good job in the beginning, uh, got canned, was, was self-aware enough to go, I, I'm way too old. It's, it's, just, it's just not happening. And then just comes up with another great idea. And and like like you say, the punchline is not that he's illiterate. No. Right? It's no. it's like look at this guy, look how stupid he is. Instead, it's um uh 
like whoever they get, like the the, the, the bishop or whoever the the, the, vicar, yeah. the vicar, the one that like uh, fired him, like had yeah. had this thing. Like you end up looking at that person and thinking, like, well, what a jerk! Yeah. Like he's he's doing his job all this time. Now you have a problem with him. It's great. Well, it seems um, unreasonable, really. Yes. Um, um, but um, the fact that he managed to become an extremely wealthy man as a result, I think, is a very satisfying conclusion to the story. Yeah, and, and like you said, like I, I think uh, I, I always I always like short stories. Well, one of the reasons I like um, I like reading Mont Passant uh, is for that great punchline ending. And to me, that was just the best. He goes like, what, what could you have done if you could read and write? He goes, I would have been the verger. Like you said, yeah. like you would have been the verger of um, the Basilica. Yeah. It's just great. Um, Amy, do you have any, any other thoughts? No, I think, uh, I think that's it. This was okay. a great selection, Alan. Thank you. Okay, great. I, I, I could probably have chosen seven other stories, but these ones would seem, seem to these ones seem to pop out at me, and uh, I thought we'd all enjoy them. Yeah, I thought it, I thought it was great fun. Um, so I guess I'll kind of wrap up. Um, if uh, if you're watching and you've read any of these stories, um, or if, if you like Somerset Mom. Uh, please leave a comment. Let me know. Let, let all of us know what stories you like or have read or novels or anything like that. Um, uh, Amy, would you like to uh, say goodbye? Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> goodbye, Amy. <laughs> Bye, Matthew. Bye, and, everyone. Uh, so uh, th thank you. Thank you for all this. And uh, I'll talk to you okay. soon. Bye. I think we're still recording. <laughs> Are we? <laughs> um, Technology. It's the off button. I'm looking push, for it. Push the <laughs> off button. <laughs> I think this will have to be an outtake. <laughs>